All right, so the changes to the BBG. You know what? We're gonna go into a regular single player, advanced setup. Uh, let's see. Let's put on time. <sighs> I hate Pangea. Standard. We love standard. Harold, how about Harold? Harold's cool. Harold's a homie. Okay. <sighs> Man, my uh, my heart kind of hurts. And taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest. From this early cradle of civilization, on towards the stars. So anyways, we got the BBG notes right here. So, game mechanics and general changes. Districts, the canal moved to buttress from steam power. Um, hmm. I think this is a little bit too soon right here. I mean, I guess that it, it, it matches like where, you know, you can create a dam, maybe you can create a canal. I'm not sure. I think the canal should actually be in mass production. Because it was all the way in uh, in steam power, yeah? I don't know. But I guess if China can do it, you know, why can't other civilizations can do it? I don't know. I, I, I don't think this... Uh, I think this is just too soon for uh, regular civilizations to do it right away. So I think uh, mass production would be... Uh, uh, good flavor, yeah? Um, luxuries. Pearls and tea. Pearls give one prod, and tea gives uh, another food. So, I stand by what I say when I think, uh, who uses canals anyway? Dude, canals are super powerful. They were actually thinking about putting canals on top of hills, which... It just gives you uh, more versatility, right? In uh, like how you want to like, because uh, there, there's there, there's some positions where it's just like, hey, do I go on this two two base or do I settle right here? Or uh, it just changes, uh, it, it just more flexibility on where you can settle, where you can put things, and so forth. Because like, w in the beginning of the game, when you're thinking about canal settles or future, you know, canal placements, right? Canal cities or canal placements, you're thinking should like i should go over here because there's potential of horses being there uh later and then if your team let's say if you're playing a team game and you're like yeah there are horses right there then you're like wow but your team needs strategics you know but then i say like i settle i i'll settle somewhere different try to make uh, another canal work or whatever you know um but now you can just put them on hills and and you can build them sooner you know, like, hopefully that doesn't happen. I was, I w it was okay. I was thinking, like, on the hills, yeah, sure, you know, build a canal anywhere. But, you know, I don't know. I think it needs to be put to mass production, and we just move on from that. Um, pearls and tea, though. I stand by what I say when, um, faith and, uh, <laughs> there, there are some luxuries that just need to be absolute crap, right? 
nah, not, not, not crap, but like, I, I see, I see where they're going with, like if, if one team settles on a continent and the other team settles on another continent or you're an FFA and be like, oh, well, you settled on, you had the, you had the spices continent. Of course you had good game. You know, you get all those whack jobs that are just like, oh, I, I didn't have resources. I didn't have the, oh, you know, where's the violin, you know? Um, but, <laughs> but I'm, uh, I don't know. It's just going to, all, all of these things are accelerating the game. So the canal, it accelerates the game in a certain aspect of, you know, of, uh, of military flow of like, um, we're, we're, uh, of, of money flow because canals can give extra money, right? Uh, pearls and tea, extra food means more pop, right? Production means more buildings done, things of that nature. Like uh, this is accelerating the game, right? You got to think of it, even with spies, when a spy is captured, you gain plus one spy capacity. Um, it, it was supposed to be a hit, but like, it, it kind of, it makes sense, right? But now you get your spy back. Now you can do more things with your spy. Use the spy to uh, digress someone else's um, uh, ad ad advances or something. Like, you know, you, you, you pillage their industrial zones, right? Or you take envoys from a city state. You steal technology. You're accelerating your game, right? This accelerates the game in that aspect. You gotta accelerate the game so you can CC on turn 71, 781. I hope to God. You know, I've I've heard people still talk. Whoa, who are we gonna CC to next? Dude, the big dogs, right? Like I was hearing that in the game that we just played, that Tokugawa game I was playing. It was a monster game, yeah. And I'm just thinking, dude, we're just getting started. You see, you see Harambe, that that mofo just running through the map. He's he's having a hell of a time, dude. He he's out there. He, he was just like, da, 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 da. who who's next, you know? And then he tries to mess with some of my cities, and I'm like, oh hell no, you know? And that's where we have the fun, right? And that's that that dude. That is Civ right there. And someone trying to say, let's CC, you know, oh, I'm having a bad, fucking leave, bro. I, you know what? This is where the game gets hella fun. When you start getting to, when you start getting over in this era right here, and dude, I, I two turn Operation Ivy overflow, of course, right? But I two turn this in it's the fastest I've ever done it, right? Usually it's like, I, I might have two turned it one time in, in the Scythia game where I had Rue Valley, right? But um, but when you could two turn Operation Ivy, Overflow, yeah, and then have, ah, uh, and I have like a, uh, and two turning Thermal Nukes. Dude, Normal Nukes, yeah, those are great. But the Thermals, right? Holy hell. Hitting two cities at once. The, it's, it's not even about uh, it, it, it's about, it's, it's, a uh, demoralizing the enemy, right? When someone gets hit by a thermal and it hits two of their cities and all their production, things that they were doing, things that they were planning, you know, hopes and dreams, you know, the future, they had it all laid out and <sighs> fucking gone. That's fun, right? Someone does that to you. How strong is your mental game when a new comes at you? Yeah. Okay. But. Enough of that. Okay. I hope this music's not copyrighted. I'm not sure. Okay, anyways. So, yeah, you get your spy back. You're being, uh... You, uh you're unsuccessful? Well, it's okay. You're your spy capacity back, you know? It makes sense, you know? You just recruit more spies in that aspect. Uh, religion. Condemning units no longer reduces religious spread. Um... I think when you kill a unit or something, I don't know. I think it should still. This makes sense, yeah. Passive spread strength from cities increased to three from two. Huh. It just buffs up religion. Buffs up crusade for sure. I don't know. A bit, it just buffs up spread. I mean, it's good. I think that's an alright change. 
it's not crazy. Tourism. Culture victory. Uh, great works writing from four to two. Six from four and eight. So I was talking about this earlier. People are like, oh, it's just four and two. Dude, this is 100% more, right? Two plus two is four, baby. This is 50% more. This is 33% more, right? It's a lot. And this is, uh, this is, these are, uh, you're adding all of that just from this. Now seaside is resorts and ski resorts. And you're giving more of that. Tourism from mall, arena, three tourism from what? This is 200% more. It no longer requires conservation. State, dude. So we're going to start seeing record numbers for culture victory just, just from this, okay? Nuts. Absolute nuts. I'm not a culture guy myself. I enjoy uh, jet bombers and nukes. Um, but if they're just going to hand it to you and you're playing a culture sieve and you're just like, well, I'm in the back line. I'm allied. I don't backstab, whatever. You know, I might, you know, do a little something with uh, Russia. Sure. Um, rock bands, potential albums. This is the only debuff right here. Reduced from 20% to be 80%, blah, 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 whatever. This doesn't matter. Rock band, you're getting all of this, all of these goodies, and then they're just taking away bah, that. Nothing crazy. Okay, Golden Ages, nothing. Digital democracy. Okay, so you remove three combat strength mollus. Additionally, add two, plus two tourism per specialty. <laughs> Record-breaking numbers, man. You're gonna have all of this culture. And by the way, you're not gonna get when you when you went into that government. You're, you're when you go to digital democracy, you're all in, right? Because you're getting minus three on all of your units, right? You're supposed to be like a pacifist. That's what this is. I'm being a pacifist. I'm just trying to get tourism, trying to win your people over. Now you don't get that. And then now you get a buff. So this is a twofer, right? You get to remove the minus one and then you get a plus one. Cool. Corporate liberal, uh, libertarianism, if I said that right. Anyways, minus 10%, you get to remove that. That's nice. Additionally, you add five to the strategics. Uranium, the Illumina, and the Oya. So you get to, this is huge right here. I don't care about the 10% science because when you actually over into uh, corporate uh, libertarianism, when you're over here already, you're over here already. And, and if you're going for something like this, if you're going for this, so commercial hubs and encampments provide cities with 10% production and accumulating resources with improvements provide plus one per turn. This is nuts, right? So when you're getting into this, you're fueling the machine with insane production. The minus 10% science doesn't even matter because you're pretty much already at tech. Would be a fun tourism gamer. Yeah, it'd be, it would be interesting. I'd like to see, I mean, the game is, the game is changing. And thanks again to the BBG team for, you know, providing these changes and, you know, being up to date. Like, it's, uh, it, they keep the game alive. Some changes I agree with, some I don't, you know, that's life, you know. But it does make the game uh, more fun. For sure. So, cheers to them. Um, but this right here, the five, right, because, dude, there, there was, uh, so even the last game, Strategics are everything. They are everything. You, you don't have strategics. You run out of horses. You run out of iron. Shit sucks. Yeah. And then later in the game, uh, aluminum and oil. Oil, you can get this pretty easy with the military academies, right? You get plus two. Um, and, uh, you know, per. And that's nice. And hopefully... I feel like I, I have more of this, for sure. Uh, it's just nice to have. These are very nice to have. Airports suck, right? Because you need the hangars. First, you need the aerodome, you need the hangars, and you need the airports in order to accumulate more. 
this is huge right here because bombers cost a lot, right? And the uranium is also nice because that the higher the strategic, the less, you know, the less of it there is, right? There is not a lot of uranium out there. I mean, sometimes you'll do the search function and let's see if you uncovered like most of the map or whatever, you'll see like six or seven of them out there. Sometimes there's a uh, there's a player that gets two of them and then you go that lucky SOB, right? But that's the name of the game, you know? Not everybody gets to be, uh, you know, in paradise, island, right? You know, with all of the luxes and the resources. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. Move on. But this is huge. So I do enjoy this. You get to keep your science and you get more strategics. Wonderful. Synthetic uh, technocracy. Technocracy. Uh, remove 10% tourism. No one cares at all. Um, because if you're going for tourism, you're in digital democracy, right? For the more culture. That's what you're at. Excuse me. I just sneeze. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Uh, let me. Splash water in my face for a second. Give me a second. Jeez. All right, we're back. Am I dying? No, no, I'm sneezing. Sneezing is nothing. Okay. Um, remove 10% tourism, yada, yada. Additionally, add 50% production towards spaceports, industrial zones, campuses, harbors, and also buildings inside those districts. So this accelerates the... Uh, um, this accelerates insanely with... Um, with science victory, right? So it's a an insane boost because spaceports, geez, is it like eighteen hundred freaking production or some crap? Yeah, it's eighteen hundred freaking production. So pretty nuts. Um. Industrial zone and campuses, harbors. I mean, you should already have your industrials up. Like, if you're at uh, at technocracy, if you're already here, like it's all the way over here. If you're already here and you don't have your your power plants up, you're doing something wrong, right? Because. Production is complementing more production. So you're already, so it's like I go, okay, industrial zone, workshop, factory, and then you choose like, okay, do I want coal, oil? What do you have more of? Usually you want to mix and match it a little bit, depending uh, if you're on the sea a lot, uh, you kind of want to save your coal for your ships, but then you kind of want to switch out. You got to just see how, what strategics you have. Um, yeah. Nuclear power plants are okay. It just depends. They're really good, actually. It's just like, I like to use uranium for other things, of course. Okay. Um, harbors, so what I would use this for is definitely for the spaceports. Of course, yeah. I'd like to use this for the spaceports. The industrial zones should already be up. Uh, campuses should already, you should already have your research labs by then too, so that's nothing. Um, harbors, I would say this would be good for like newly founded cities if you're trying to get, you know, quick lighthouses. And that's another thing, like, I, I focus a lot on gold, 
like even as like a non gold sieve or whatever like not a non gold sieve but like uh like if i'm doing like a war sieve you always want to have gold you need to fuel the machine right so if i i have harbors unlocked right i start producing the harbors and try to get those lighthouses right away because it's going to complement uh it's going to give me traders yeah and traders are good admiral points are whatever it just depends on the situation but like uh and then you could just like, okay, I'm just doing this. Then you build a shipyard and then you go for the seaport. And then you're just getting a, additional yields from envoys from, you know, um, trade city states. It's good. You know, I think that's what I would use that on. Um, but like uh, campuses, I don't know. I mean, these are just for newly founded cities. Like you should already, when you're in this era of the culture tree, you should already have your uh, your spaceports, industrials, and campuses already up. That's just it, right? Harbors is good just for more money flow and trade, yeah? Um, I don't know what I think about this music, homie. We're just going to start. Maybe we just start it over or something. Sure, whatever. It's, it's not flowing right, is it? Um... Pikemen changes. Change production from 200. Standard from 180. To 200. Okay. So this just makes... Heavy cavalry more effective. And uh, melee units uh, just stronger in general. I mean, it's... Melee units counter pikemen, yeah. But pikemen counter the cavalry... <sighs> I don't know if it needed the change, but maybe the defense was just too strong. That's that's where I'm kind of seeing. Maybe they're just too cheap. I don't know. This is a funky. Uh, this is a funky one. I would have to see. Uh, <laughs> it was funny because someone was a uh, uh, getting attacked, and they had pikemen, but they, it was taking like six turns for them to make. Pretty sure they didn't have the card in, but you know, I wasn't really there. So, I don't know. This just goes to show, like, you need to have your cards in. You need to have those 50% cards in. Because, like, standard speed, 50% card, this is actually 100 production, right? So, if you have a 40 production uh, city, yeah, you're going to, you're going to three turn it. You're going to three turn the pikeman. Put the damn card in, okay? Instead of five turning it. So, make sure you do that. Um, well, if you have 50% production, then it's a two turn. Anything that you have in your city is going to have 50% more production towards the damn unit. Okay, so you'll two turn the unit. Okay, just put the damn card in. You don't put unit production cards in when you're producing the units. It, that's wrong. Just do it. Now more than ever. Cause someone's gonna cav rush, rush you or something like that. You kind of want a couple of those up. Okay. Um, civilization and leader changes. A cup of coffee. Catherine Magnificence. That's why I'm bad at war. Well, how you get better at war is analyzing your faults, right? Analyzing your whole gameplay and say, where did I F up at? Okay. I effed up on here. Okay? Write it down. Write it down. I don't put the unit card in. Put it right in front of your face. Post it on the wall or something. Grab grab a little bit of tape. Put it right here in front of you. And put war. Papa says put the damn unit production card in. Otherwise you'll die. And then maybe. Just maybe. You'll uh, create the habit, okay? You may not do it overnight, but that damn post-it note of Papa saying, do this, it might stick. Okay. So, Catherine Magnificence, all improved resources receive one culture. Resources adjacent to Chateau receive one culture. Resources adjacent to Theater Squares receive one culture. Okay. This right here, that's funny, yeah? This right here. So Catherine Magnificence, she got the plus one culture on improved resources. 
when the theater square of the chateaus, she got plus two when you hit the feudalism, right? Right when you hit feudalism, then it was plus two. Now this is this right here is a, it's an insane buff, right? Because these are all resources. So any resource that you see that you improve, you receive one culture. This is absolutely broken in my eyes because there were some resources that were like, you know, you improved, you you put a chateau down and like, yeah, you hit like maybe two or three resources, four, six culture when you hit feudalism, whatever, and you got that. And, th and then you're, then you started to spike up, right? You started to get that heavy culture. Life was good. You, if it was next to a river, you got gold next to whatever, more culture, whatever. That was great. And I, I thought Magnificence was in a good spot. She wasn't strong, but she was good, right? Um, but now I think of Catherine Magnificence as like a gall, right? Gall just improves a damn mine, gets culture, right? She just improves a resource. It's culture, right? You mine everywhere. It's culture and resources. They're there. Just improve it. Additional culture. Like you get mega value from your builder. Every time you build a builder, pre-feudalism, it's a culture and a half. Or it's, th it's three culture. It's three culture. So you think of your builder as a monument, right? And every single city that you go to, you just build a builder. Don't build a monument. Build a monument way after, right? It's almost gonna go like builder district, you know, place the district down first, right? Of course, you try to do the discount. But it's gonna go builder, district, and maybe monument, maybe, you know? If I have nothing else to build, maybe just build another builder. Maybe you chop out, you know, another builder, right? You're going to improve resources like crazy because you're going to get rewarded with the culture and then you're gonna hit feudalism at record timing Right? Because you're getting all of these, you're getting culture. Culture in the early game is nuts. That's why Moshe 2 is insane. Because you have a six pop city, that's six additional culture. That gets you to political philosophy, hella timing. And then it gets you to, you know, defensive tax, recorded history, feudalism, whatever. It gets you to your government titles to complement, to further, you know, uh, you know, accelerate your game. So it's like, uh, you have audience chamber, you have more government titles right here. Boom, your cities are growing. Growing means more science, more, it means more everything, right? More production. So, and you get half of the bonuses now, right? So it's kind of like, so you got 100% of it at feudalism, now you get 50% of it now, and then you get 50% of it at feudalism. Getting it now than later is way more powerful. So, the tier one sieves with this patch, we'll get there. We'll get there. But Catherine moved. She is definitely, um, she's definitely strong. She's definitely strong just from this alone. It's just, a, it's the same stuff, but she gets it sooner. Right? So chateaus just give a little bit less and you're still building chateaus. And you're, you're probably not even gonna go audience with this. You're gonna go ancestral right and then <laughs> you're gonna improve it, it's it's nuts because culture in a city increases the uh the border expansion as well that's why rome is so powerful because you get a free monument so you're getting two culture and then your expand your borders are expanding just like your capital was super powerful yeah it gives you insane tempo exactly so when you do ancestral hall and then when you hit feudalism at really good timing, record timing, possibly too, because you're getting all this in culture. And what if you get a pantheon? What if I get plantations pantheon? Now I got plantations economy with, with uh, additional culture on top of that. Nuts. And then you get record uh, timing feudalism. And then you put the chateaus for extra housing. And then you're doing builders, chopping out builders on chateaus that are giving you housing and more gold. Dude, game's nuts. I played Catherine Magnificence like last week before the patch or whatever, and I won that game. I was just, just super big. I had good science. And by the way, I never build, I only build one theater square with Catherine Magnificence, only one. Okay. Cause like, uh, let me see. With France. 
and I only do it for air score. I just do the adjacencies for air score and call it a day because I get so much culture from the chateaus alone that it gets me to where I want to be. I can do, I can hit mobilization at a, a good timing. And as I'm going into war, I'm, I'm at fascism, right? Because you can focus on, you can focus on your, your production and on your science and then just slap down a couple of chateaus that are giving you culture. Like, who cares about books, right? Getting ancestral is superior strat than building with audience. It is. I always run that. Yep, it is good. I I only run audience on a, on a sieve, on sieves that like, um, that I have minimal land, right? Like Tokugawa, for instance, like you want to go audience, they have mega capital, yeah? But I didn't have any land right there. I was in a corner. Had to do something. But yeah, audiences, I like audience because I like amenities and I know what to do with the additional plus 10, right? I'm always moderating, uh, moderating, uh, excuse me, let me talk, uh, my, uh, my amenities, making sure I'm always plus three or plus five and what I can do to change that, making sure, because if you're not checking that stuff, you're not getting maximum yields, yeah? Okay, Eleanor, adjust yields to plus one on great work slots of writing and relics, two on great works of arts and artifacts and plus four on great works of music. I feel like that's a buff, yeah? That's a good buff. It's Eleanor things. Eleanor is good. Yeah. I don't know, like, the crazy change, but I think this is, like, uh... She just gets more culture. I don't think she gets... It just yields to plus one. I think you're getting, like, what is this? If you get plus two on great works of art... Is that plus two on the science? If you have a science, if you have a campus down, I think so. I'm not really sure. Maybe post in the comments, stuff. But this seems like a buff to me, on Eleanor. Eleanor could use a little bit of love, yeah. Prediction time. I don't even know what, what prediction is for a game, you whack job. What do you want me to predict right here? So, one of my favorite... Good morning, though. Good morning, though, Beth. Your, your name reminds me of Belveth uh, for League. Immortal Nerf, thank the Lord. Pasha back to Navasov. No, Pasha, Pasha's a good player. He's a good player. Um, Georgia, the wall gains plus one culture. Heads or tails? Tails never fails. Should I just... <laughs> you do the to coin toss and let me know if I won. Oh, I won? Okay. So, Georgia right here, she gains one culture on her walls. So, this right here, Tamar the Great. So, she has this damn wall. And it gives plus four faith, and it's doubled when you're in Golden Age. You should be hitting Golden Ages with Tamar every single time. This is the beauty. This is the beautiful thing about the Civ, right? The walls are amazing, but the problem that was in the beginning of the game is like you had a slow start, right? Not in the monumentality. You had like decent monumentality, yeah. Um, and she, it, like, she was she's strong, but she just got stronger for sure because like. They buffed her up earlier where you got a plus one envoy for every, or you got plus one um, faith for every envoy you had in the city state. So when you're playing FFA and you first meet, so let's say if I met Muscat, I got plus one, I get plus two gold, right, for the capital and in every market, lighthouse, whatever. But like, I also got plus one faith. Now let's say if I met uh, Jerusalem. I get plus one faith in the capital, but I also got plus one faith from the envoy, which means I accumulate two faith per turn just from first meeting that CS, which is really good. 
and you start accumulating this faith and um, and that just helps out your money mentality. It's really good. But the problem was when you did your newly founded cities, you needed to get the wall out of the way, right? You needed to get the, you know, the plus four faith. You're in golden age at that time. So you get that plus eight faith. But after that, now you need to, now you need to slap down the district, but then you need the monument. Now you need the culture. Now you can just, you don't skip the monument completely, but you can comfortably go wall into district because there's sometimes where you need to chop out a monument from time to time just to maintain your culture so you can get better cards for your sieve. So you want to gamble? We'll gamble right after this, okay? Hey, why, don't you, why don't you take it easy? Why don't you keep your money in your pocket for the time being, okay? You're throwing it all over the table. You're creating havoc. Hold on. Water? Hi, Derby. Hello. First time in chat, a warrior, by the way. Why does it say this? I feel like I've seen you. <sighs> Nubia. I will send you to Jesus. <laughs> Nubia, range units. Bonus extended to naval range units, quads, frigates, battleships, and missile cruisers. Okay. This is a buff, but it's a F all buff. Like, who... Okay, that once in a lifetime. Doesn't Nubia have like a planes? <sighs> Let me double check, dude. I'm pretty sure there is a, a planes uh, spawn bias or some sh shenanigans here. Uh, yes. Do they have the spawn bias right here? Mm, I don't know exactly where it is on the BBG channel. But I'm pretty sure she spawns on land most of the time. Unless if you're on seven seas and, you know, the bias, you know, gets kind of, you know, manipulated a little bit and you're on the coast. Okay, now you can build these things faster. But it's 30% faster, but you have Maritime Industries, right? There's a card over here in Foreign Trade. It gives you 100% production towards these units, right? And then you're going into exploration where you get press gangs for another 100% production towards, you know... You, you see where I'm getting at? It's 30%. By the way, I don't know about you guys, but every time I play Nubia, there's this bonus from Nubia, right? Okay. All range unit, blah, blah, blah. Mines over strategic resources provide plus one production. Okay, cool. Mines over bonus luxury resources provide plus two gold. I never spawn next to Amber. Yo, now I'm a culture district. What's up, homie? Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for the sub. Doing a little uh, BBG stuff here, you know, looking at the changes. Come for the ride, yeah. Thank you, homie. I appreciate you. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, a cup of coffee, yeah. Buffy Nubia early again. Is a Civ can murder anyone early? And that's really... Uh, this is a... This is not... This is like one of those behind-the-scenes buffs, right? Which would be like, oh, I forgot I had that or I can use that. Because you're never going to do naval, really. I mean, why would you play Nubia on 7C? Well, you're not even going to spawn on the damn C. Maybe you get there later. Right? And then the bonus applies. But I don't know about you, but I never spawn next to Amber. I never get my diamonds. And I only get one iron tile that apparently I put the government plaza on earlier. Excuse me. So, and maybe, I, you know, I don't think I've ever seen the gold bonus on Nubia. And I played Nubia a fair share. And then I stopped playing it because I'm like... I don't get it. Thank you for the bless you. Thank you. Get a bucket of coffee. <laughs> but it's three minutes after midnight. Nice, nice. And you can't sleep? Oh boy. It's all good. Just relax and play some Civ. Newbie appearance give one uh, more yield from buildings and districts. Nate's crazy. Nubia players that people that know how to play Nubia can have good Good sim, right? 
you give it one more yield, it's like 50% more yield, right? You can't give it a half. More science at life? I don't know, dude. I don't know. I think that's too much. Nubia is at a okay state. It's not bad. It's not strong. It's it's at that point where it's like, it's Nubia players, right? If you're a Nubia player, the Civ is good. If you're just like, want to mix and match, play something else. Okay. So... Yeah, Nubia is good, right? And building and like uh, and one of those sleeper units is field cannons. I don't see people using field cannons a lot, and uh, it's a really strong unit, especially when you're doing a uh, uh, if you're doing like a heavy cav push or something like that, because heavy cav is going to be met with pikemen, which are now getting a nerf. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Anyways. Scythia, Kurgan's gain an additional one faith base. So this is just making the tiles look uh, prettier, right? Get a little bit of extra faith, you know, that's good. Did Scythia need a buff? I don't think so, but the additional faith is nice. It makes you want to build these things a little bit more. It makes you think about them more, and more faith means more horses. Not a bad thing. Tokugawa. So, uh, so tell me you become a newbie OTP? No, no, no. I'm a... If I'm not an OTP. Because you guys redeem my civs, right? So it's like... How the hell can I be an OTP? Harambe got to use Valletta with buff uh, faith last night. So what Harambe did was amazing uh, with, his, with, uh, with his position, right? He saw weakness in a few players, right? And he was... I could, I could just, I can see it. I can't, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure he's pillaging, right? So I'm pretty sure he did that, but he's pillaging, right? And with Valletta and in the newly founded cities, he's faith buying all of the districts, meaning he's getting ahead faster, right? He's settling. Valletta is absolutely insane, especially when you're at war. So people are like, oh, I can faith buy the buildings inside of the city center yeah everybody knows that but do you know that you can buy barracks stable armory military academy like that these districts are extremely expensive yeah so yeah it's absolutely insane buying that district right off the bat and if you are going to war and you have, so you already have valetta so you're already getting additional production for the said buildings in there which means it's like a free tile. Like it's a free production tile that you just get to your city because you're getting production from the military building and you're getting production from the red city state. And you get it for just pressing the faith button, right? It's good. It's really good. Valletta is one of my favorites. Yeah. And it helps you out in a pinch too. Even if you have like a hundred faith stored up and someone attacks you, faith by walls, super OP. Um, Tokugawa, one gold per district. What the hell is this music? Give me a second. Okay. One gold per district in the uh, domestic destination. So he got nerfed with his yields in the previous patches, but now they're giving him back, you know, the gold per district. I was playing Tokugawa yesterday. And it, it helped out so much because I had no tiles to really work. And I was, uh, and I, I couldn't wait to get specialists so I could work those. Cause I was working like uh, two food, one gold tiles in the sea and it was bad. So, and that saved me right there. The extra gold, Accumulation, right? It's just, it's really good. So, yeah. Tokugawa's good. Julius Caesar. All units gain 100% experience. Huh. So, Caesar did need a little bit of a buff, right? This may be pushing it a little too far, right? 
you get a free Kabul, yeah? So if you go over here... Your units receive double experience from battles they initiate. I don't believe the stacks. If it does, that's it's a one-tap promotion, right? So... Uh, I don't know. I think he should get 50% experience, right? Because when you're in battle, right? The first... If if you <laughs> if you hit somebody, it's an automatic promotion, I believe. If not, it's one off. One or two off. And then the second promotion is two, three tap, right? And then you're already at level. This is like it, you you cycle your units out like crazy. Like you hit a couple of times, oh, promotion, back those units out, promote it, boom, and you keep cycling back and forth, and you'll have level threes and level fours before you know it. And it's extremely powerful in war because, example, a field cannon, you get down to a bottom promotion right there, the sucker can hit twice, right? You get to tanks. I had a level four tank, level five actually, but the promotion down in the tree is breakthrough and it's like a, it's like a blitzkrieg thing. It's, uh, it, hit, you, it hits uh, an additional time if uh, movement allows it, right? Um... You get to your horses. Imagine if you get on your coursers, right? Get your coursers, your cavalry up. Thank you for the follow. Nada. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a rough one right here. You won't have tanks though. We're we'll promoting legions. Well, it depends on what type of, uh, you want to go, lost my other account? Oh, bro, I'm sorry about that. Your early scouts, even, uh, yeah, and that's a really good point, by the way. Your early scouts, so your scouts are going to get more, it, literally, it that accelerates your information gathering, and it gets your goodie hunts. Imagine having a level, you know, three scout with endurance, it's moving around like crazy, and then you get the ambush trait. Now you got plus 15 scout just chilling there. And that can create just like a little havoc. Like when someone sees a scout and like they're at war, what do they do? They buy a horse, the horse kills a scout or the scout gets away, whatever. Now that sucker's plus 15. What if you go into ally territory? What if you just have like, like a little like a spec ops like scout, right? That just is just messing around with someone. Like, they, you can't get that scout off the tile. And guess what? It has endurance, so now it has five movements. Oh, by the way, you pillage for three, you move for two. Sounds good to me. So, um... So, uh, you won't have tanks, so... Uh, it just depends. It depends on what type of person you are with the Julius Caesar. If you go... Legions, chop legions, you can do that. But... If you want to see the beauty in it, right? Because early war, it depends. It, it depends how good of the defender is, like how good they are at defending. But if you do promote like cavalry units, these are your level two choppers waiting, waiting for action, right? Pillage. You don't even have to wait for that. You just get your coursers up, and then you just move, and then you pillage. You move and you pillage, right? For one, and it's super strong. Super strong. Your units just don't die because they just get extra health from the promotions. And they're just strong as hell. Um, and this goes for naval units too. You get your plus sevens. You get your plus ten from range. And then you get your formation, another ten. Like, it, it just goes on and on and on. Uh, the privateers, right? They get plus ten on the second promotion on the right side of the tree, right? Excuse me. So you get you get the fifty percent promotion down, right? Uh, defeated unit, you get fifty percent of the gold, whatever. And then you go to the plus ten against other naval units. Now you have hella privateers. Make those into matas. Get the subs going on. Very strong, very strong. Plus seven boats are no joke. That's why Portugal's so strong with the nows because they automatically get the promotion, which is disgusting. Yeah. Immortals. Plus three combat strength when attacking from three C. You know, I don't really know why they needed to 
they're like, oh, the immortals, people, I guess they just said, we don't see immortals, we would like to see immortals. They buff it up, that's all we see now, right? Um, now instead of 3 CS, it's 3 when they're attacking. Great. That's just, in general. I've seen enough immortals too, yeah. Nader Shaw, plus 7 combat strength when attacking full strength units or defensible districts. So, I don't know exactly the threshold, but if you are 23, I think it's 23 or 26 strength above a unit, you instant, you, you one-shot it. Um, God, I forgot what it is. I think it's somewhere around there. Um, it's just strike first, strike hard. Th this, is, this is the Cobra. I don't know if you remember uh, the Karate Kid, but strike first, strike hard. That's fuck, that's, that's Nader Shaw right here. Okay, so I guess uh, that's good. You know, I think he's I think he's already in. A, I think he's at a great spot in the game. I don't think I don't know. Maybe they're just slow. They're buffing up just a little bit. Uh, some of the civs just a little bit because the other ones are getting crazy buffs. But I don't know. I don't think that. I don't think we need that. It's not bad. It, it's it's okay. It's just okay. Portugal, 50% gold delayed until cartography from start of the game. 50 cent science and 50 cent. So Portugal just scales more, it seems. Hmm. Get science and culture. Seems like a crazy buff. You get delayed until... You get delayed a little bit. Hmm. He's weaker early for sure. That's this is. We'll have to see. But once you get to uh, education, medieval affairs, I think it's just game over if he's not touched. Continent bias. Okay. No longer receives a split bonus yields on internal traders. <laughs> Rip Spain. <laughs> Reverb 5, combat strength for other religions. Well, okay, who cares about this? So 3, 5. You're good against religions. We know that. But it was the internals traders that were accelerating his uh, his game faster. Dragos back to now. Dragos is a good player. He's a good player. But he did use Spain to its full ability. He, he was like, oh, wow. He was that one guy. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Age of Steam, remove 10% uh, production from workshops. Total is now 20% with factor. Okay, so you don't get it from the workshops. Plus one production from improved strategics from unimproved. Uh, thank you for the follow, Warrior. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you, my friend. Um, I think this is a really good one. Yeah, yeah. Victoria was just too... If Victoria is in the back line, she just gets the most insane production ever, right? You got to think about it. It's production complementing production. The reason why you build industrial zone... Industrial zones always pay off. Like, good ones place down, like your plus threes to plus fives, whatever. Those are going to pay off. Other civs that get more yields, of course, they're paying off, for sure. But, you get... <laughs> Another 10% on workshops and then factories, you know, and then coal power plants and you get a 30% more production pretty much for doing nothing. You're just doing what you're doing. Then removing the 10%, that's good. The strategic resources, that's good too because uh, with Victoria, you would just open up horses and you get free tile. You get free 2-3 or whatever the hell it was. It was plus 2 production when... Uh, when it when the sieve was actually released, whack jobs, like absolutely broken tiles. Start seeing like one six one seven one six unimproved tile. Oh, it was, ugh, coal. Get so much production without a crazy setup. Yeah, that was crazy. But I think that's a really good nerf because it still it still gives the flavor of the sieve. Like, hey, still build your coal power plants. Twenty percent production late game is crazy. Like, she is one of the sieves. Um, she is literally one of the sieves that can actually get 
uh, like you can two turn, uh, three turn Manhattan projects and Operation Ivy, like with ease, with ease. So, yeah. Congo, extra yields from relics removed. Artifact and sculpture, okay, okay. So that's Congo in general. Uh, relics, that's, that sucks that the yields are removed, but like, um, you get these paid actors that give the relics to a Congo. Dude, I've had a Congo in a game have like, it was, it was like 400 some culture, like turn 50. Some stupid. It was so crazy, but the, the Congo had five or six relics. And uh, you literally just grow. And uh, you, you grow, you get gold, you get a little bit of faith. It's it's uh, it's quite stupid how fast uh, the Civ um, accelerates just because of a relic. I mean, if you high roll, like I've seen Congos get relics like turn two off of a hut, you know, with their warrior, and it's just GGs. Literally, you get your B2, your B3s out extremely fast. You go B4, right? Because you're going to have your B4 out. This is... You're gonna have your B4 out before the guy has their B3 out. That's how fast the relic accelerates your game. So, you gotta be really careful. Um, let's see. Norway, plus 50% production towards holy sites. Okay. This was really good. Norway in general. Now you get. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Norway, 50% production towards holy sites. But this Norway, whoa, hold on, hold on. This is crazy. Hold on, but he hold on. Cause this is this is not changed yet. Okay. So they're removing this from 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 the leader, but they're putting it on Norway. So it's not it's like it's not getting removed. So th this is for both heralds. But Okay, ability move from Harold Kong to Norway. So Norway in general, okay, right? But the new Harold gets 50% production to holy site buildings. That's crazy. That is absolutely insane. So the guy gets 50% production towards holy sites and the buildings inside, which means, and the reason why that's crazy is because you rush theology when you're in this sieve. Political philosophy, whatever. Uh, mysticism, go to theology, whatever. You're going there. Because the stop church gives you one influence. Because your levy units get plus one movement. Get plus one movement. And then, it, look at this shit. This is crazy. You get uh, 75 discount in levying units, so it's cheap as hell. It's like the hungry bonus, but for levying, right? And you get culture... Faith and science from kills equal to 50% of the of opponent's combat strength. So you just kill another city state or you go ahead and grieve somebody else, whatever have you. But it's cheaper, right? Um, and then you got Fez. You get plus, so Fez gives you science when you convert. This Civ gives you science and culture per population when converting the city to religion for the first time. I actually have a Norway game that I did this at and it was, uh, it was fantastic. It was very fun. I uh, did quite enjoy the Civ. The changes were very strong. I don't think. I think the I think the Civ is good, like I mean, like really good. I don't think they need to give the fifty percent production towards holy site buildings. Maybe they're doing that because you don't get the boat. But. The Stop Church is one of the most powerfulest temples in the game, right? It is, uh, like if we go over here, 
it gives one faith to each resource tile in the city. So to your land and one production for each coastal uh, resource in the city. So like you're getting a hell of a amount of production and faith from this. You're building it 50% faster. By the way, you're getting an additional influence per turn. One influence. Oh, you're spamming holy sites. Dude, I didn't even have coral or feed the world. And I was I was flying. Because I was like, uh, I, I wasn't even paying attention to the religion. Because I didn't think he got the adjacency bonuses. But he gets it from the coastal tiles. So he gets these bonuses. Harold's strong. Harold is really strong. And then when you convert something, you just get some more science and culture. You're going to have so much faith. It's going to be absolutely insane. And another thing is, um, yeah, yeah. Coral, lay ministry, campuses, and harbors. Yep. Yeah. So what you do in this is, uh, this is another thing. When you're levying units, you don't get merchants or writers. Who the hell said you did, you whack job? You get you might you might uh you might uh, do you only do those it sucks whack job just saying I know I I didn't say it was good so another thing is like you want to see what the city states have in in their city right you want to see if you can boost that up like boost like if they have three archers and you need to go towards machinery for some reason. Levy that city state, get the boost. If you see that they have like uh if you like if you're right around here with military science and if you see that they have like maybe three men at arms, upgrade them to line infantry so you can get the boost for replaceable parts. On resources? No, no, I think that's just how it is. But uh always find way to boost the tree. Because it saves you a ton. When people are like, oh, let me just, let me just hard tech, you know, ballistics. Let me just hard tech metal cat. No, no. You don't want to do that at all, right? Because 40%, you get the boot, the boost is 40%. So we'll just say it's at like a 550. So that's 220 science that you get for doing said action, right? Are you producing 220 science a turn? That's a whole turn that you lose right because you didn't do the boost you didn't go out of your way and utilize the other resources you had like probably production or gold to buy a couple military engineers and you know put down the uh the forts wiki yeah don't get all your information like not this game is not like uh uh it's not like everything's official inside of a uh, you know the wiki changes and shit I mean, if you have the BBG um, beta, the changes don't show. Changes are implemented into the BBG, not the BBG like like stated changes, like th like the official comments or like you know the like the summary. Those are officially changed in the BBG. The beta is just for testing. So, when occupied city has less than 100% loyalty, its culture, science, and faith output suffers a 37. Per, uh, 37% uh, penalty from 75 and production and gold suffer 25% from 50. It's occupied city reaches 100 loyalty. These are removed. Mm. So from 75, so you get the yields more? What? From 100? Suffers a 30 from 75%. I guess get the yields faster. I don't know. I don't. Uh, I do war a lot. It helps me out. All right. It helped me out. Good. Maori. Coupe. Evangelist. No one does this. Don't worry about this. This doesn't mean need to be talked about, right? Hopefully there'll be a change so people actually use it, but no one uses it at all. Unless if you're trying to go for uh, a religious uh, victory. Um, let's see. 
T1 Coastal Spawn Bias, so they're removing his ability. So they're removing Coupe from the game, it looks like. So you start with Sailing Unlocked and the ability to enter ocean tiles for all naval and land units before cartography. Note that embarking land units still require shipbuilding. So you can enter the ocean, but you can't exit the ocean. Embark units, unapproved woods and rainforest grant one production. Okay, okay, okay. Culture bomb surrounding tiles, resources can be harvested, yada yada. Palace receives three housing and one amenity. Okay. They removed all this free builder and starting one population, but you get three housing and one amenity. So if you settle on a tile, you're instantly happy, right? On a on a lux. Coupe did ruin a lot of people's games, right? And it sucks that they had to remove the start the game in the ocean. But it would be nice to see in the future if there was like a like a certain min distance spawn that you could spawn from the enemy with Coupe. So it would like it would make it so like if you wanted to settle near an enemy you would have to really go out of your way in order to do that. And hopefully it would give tempo, enough tempo, uh, like enough time for the enemy to respond to a, a two galley attack before you even hit uh, sailing. This is implemented into the beta. This is, this is beta. This is beta notes. Right, this is what we're on right now. Like if we go right here, it's right here. Better balance game 5.4 beta. So this has not changed in the whole game yet. Fixed tourism, improved tiles. Wow, more, more, we're, yeah, we're making sure that tourism slaps. That's what that means. We're making sure you get all those yields. So, yeah. Now, who do I think that benefited from this the most? Dude. I, well, the one that's close to my heart is Georgia. I love Georgia. I think this is a really good buff. I don't think people... I build Georgia differently, but yeah, I, I, I love this. This is a very strong pick for me. Um, Catherine is strong now. Very strong. Scythia players will love this. Tokugawa is Tokugawa. That's whatever. Caesar is just going to be a menace, I think. I think Caesar is like... um. This is going to be absolutely annoying to verse against. This I this needs to be 50% experience if they're going that direction. I think 100% is way too much. A free Kabul is nuts. Um, who benefited the least? Nubia. From the buffs. Who got hit the hardest? Spain. But Spain needed to get a, a good hit. He really, really did. And possibly the Congos with the Relics too. They needed a hit too. Oh, Harold though. This is this is a, a very strong sieve now, in my opinion. The 50% production towards Holy Site buildings. This is something that the regular Norway, right, doesn't have. Harold uh, Kong. This is nuts. This guy getting this, and this, and on like a nice little bonus right here, and extra influence, like this is going to be a, a really rough sieve to play against. And levying for cheaper is pretty crazy too. Want me to play Norway? Alright. But I think we're done with the video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you're thinking. No, I mean the note that line says not implemented, so I thought that's not part of the bit. Yeah, this is, uh, 
this is not implemented yet i don't think but these things are uh just the beta notes at the moment this is what we're testing out right now in the server Excuse me, I've been sneezing a lot. Um, yeah. So we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll have a good time with it. And uh, yeah, we'll see what we can uh, what we can do. But yeah, it's going to be... A, it's pretty fun. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about it. And uh, who do you think that benefited the most? And uh, who do you think that got hit the most? And yeah, we can go from there. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. Let's see. Cheers. All right, video's done. Okay, okay. <laughs> and cut. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> um So this is what I'm seeing right now. Voting. <sighs> Is this game still going on? Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Wait, is this the Bamba? That's a good song. Um, oh no, it's the Summer House. Okay, they're playing another game. I really miss that game. Hmm. I guess I did. <laughs> Good morning. Hello. Hello. You Hello. guys uh, just uh, start your game? No, it's very close to the end. Oh, okay. You winning? Well, let me know when you guys are done. I'll be uh, in staging, yeah? Yep, yep. Okay. Good luck to you, gentlemen. Uh, let's see. Dude, I always exit out of the damn... Uh... How big of a change is the Congo Mombasa? Oh, I forgot to cover that, actually. I actually forgot to cover that. Thank you for telling me. So... I definitely forgot to cover this. So, remove continent split bias. There's continent split mollusks and bonus yields. Archaeologists are 50% uh, cheaper to produce and purchase. 10% culture and golden cities with Mbanza does not stack. Dude. So, you're removing the damn relic? You're removing the high roll to give a good roll. Which means it's a buff, right? Does that make sense? It's broken. Mabanza provides two adjacency to commercial hubs and theater squares. It, it's like an enhanced entertainment complex, right? That's giving you five housing, four gold, 
two food, two culture, and two gold, depending on what it's next to. It's absolutely broken. It's the dumbest... Sh it, it's so bad. It's so bad. You're gonna see a lot of like commercial, you're gonna see a lot of dime or a lot of triangle uh, commercial theater square Mabanzas. And then them stacking it with other ones. You, it goes into a diamond into like, it's gonna be nuts. And on top of that, 10% culture and golden cities that have one. Like it needed more gold. Like it needed more culture. Like it needed more adjacency. Well, and then you don't have the split and the mollusks anymore and the bonus yields. Who gives a sh- You're getting all of this other stuff. Archaeologists are 50% uh, cheaper to produce and purchase. Huh? What's up, Mitch? Good morning. Congo already so strong, yeah. Now we just move, remove the- Like the continent split was- and that was- you're removing these high rolls, right? The continent split was a high roll. Right? If you- if you low rolled- and you got the split, you're fucked, right? You can't settle to the east without getting the minuses. You remove the relics, the yields and relics, wow. But now you get all this other good shit. It's gonna be, all right. It's gonna be a slow start, but it's gonna be, I don't know, I don't know, dude. It's not, it's not that bad. Congo's good. No more early growth? Yeah, you don't get the early growth, but then you get all these other bonuses later on. Once you hit, uh, I believe it's guilds, you fly. But you gotta get there. But you can get there if you have hands. 